What's going on friends and family? My name is Skyalint and today we're going to do a top 5 MMO list for the ones that will actually succeed for 2018. Now we're going to be a little bit more long-winded on each of these items as well as the introduction here so that I can really properly explain how this list is organized. And that's kind of the point of this video. It's more of a deep review. It's more of a critical analysis. Even though I haven't played all of these games fully, I have to tell you right now that it's really important to put your time and effort into things that kind of matter. And as MMO players, I know you're winded. You are actually exhausted, tired of searching for new MMO or maybe old MMO. It doesn't matter. You're just looking for a new experience. And honestly, that's what my channel's all about. You see so many top tens where I'm like, hey, here's a free to play MMO that you've never heard about. And you guys love that. But the truth is, is that there's a lot of cool stuff coming out and I love sharing it but harshly, cynically, I have to say, or maybe not even, just realistically, there's not enough room for all these games. And with the new waves of games coming out that have such similar genres and aesthetics and ideas, dude, the competition is just kind of freaking intense. It's just not gonna work. A lot of MMO do die on arrival. No matter the, how big they seem they're gonna be, there's a lot of telltale hints through their publishing, what they're doing with social media, how people are reacting to it. And of course, if you get into the early access, you can kind of see their downfalls or maybe what will keep them alive. And so that's what this video is about. This video is here to try to guide you guys with all of my experience playing MMOs and critically reviewing them professionally. Guys, I'm trying so hard here to point you in the right direction. And yes, it guts me, it tears me apart, it crushes my heart to actually tell you that only these five are going to be the ones worthwhile looking into. I cannot say that all, so many other games that I put in top tens that I want to succeed and I think are really cool, I honestly, like mathematically unbiased, I can't say that they will. I honestly think they will be too niche or they just, they'll die on arrival, they won't have enough updates, they're not gonna have the population and a lot of people think it's just the raw gameplay that matters, which is why I do top tens like that, but frankly, it's an MMO. If you don't have a massive online population to fill in those MMO mechanics, then it's lesser of a game, or it might not even be a game. So these are the five that will probably actually be games that you'll have at least new content for a whole year that should do what they're aiming to do for their respective subgenres. You know, it should be fine. It should be good enough, and maybe some of you guys will actually fall in love. So that's the dream, that's the hope, and I think it's time we jump into this. So immediately, the first thing I want to talk about is going to be an expansion. And this is actually the first time that I've ever mentioned an expansion in a top 10 list. And that might be telling of how few new MMOs I think will actually succeed, but I think it's important to promote games that constantly rebuild and revamp and like add on true expansions onto themselves and become basically a new game. And that's going to be the World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth expansion. Now, this is really important here because this expansion is retooling a lot of the game. It's going to kind of fix, all, not, I'm not gonna say it's fixing everything, but the entire leveling experience is going to be somewhat revamped. And it's already actually revamped with some updates. This expansion is going to revitalize a lot of the old content because a lot of people are going to be re-leveling a lot of uh, classes with the changes, a lot of new races being added in that you have to actually uh, unlock and then re-level. There is so much going into this that's also kind of pulling from a vanilla World of Warcraft experience with the Battle for Azeroth. I mean, if there's ever an expansion title for the World of Warcraft, it's got to be that. And I think that this is going to put the Warcraft back in WoW. And I really hope that it does. Of course, this is still an upcoming list. Yeah, it's still a lot of hope. It's a lot of hype. But at the same time, you have to realize that this is upcoming MMO to succeed. And with this expansion, I do think that this will pull in people who subbed back in vanilla. I do actually think it'll pull in new players. And I do think that with Blizzard's big push on this expansion, which seems kind of special, it seems very specific. It seems like it's tailored around what the community has actually been very vocal about, then yeah, I think that this will be a success. Even in terms of the giant of Blizzard, I think that this will do pretty good. I think it's gonna be great. And that's why I'm actually gonna be resubbing and doing content on that. And I suggest that if you haven't even played World of Warcraft, I think it's about time that you look toward it because this expansion is gonna be pretty good. All right, so the next one I wanna talk about is going to be a re-release. 
And this is, in a way, you can say this list is more about the games I, it's kind of jazz, it's more about what I don't put on the list. So for mobile MMO, I'm putting RuneScape, which is you know, a re-release. We've seen RuneScape, it's an old game actually, but RuneScape, classic, old school RuneScape, I mean, and RuneScape 3 is going to be mobile ports. And I think that compared to every other mobile MMO, like Albion or Durango that I love promoting and putting in top tens and even playing with Albion and Durango, the thing is, is RuneScape is just super solid. Not only that, but like its mechanics directly translate to mobile per like completely perfectly. It, it just works as a mobile MMO. While maybe it's seemingly dated on PC, it actually still has a great following and put it on mobile, slap it on. I think it's gonna work fantastically. I haven't actually been able to play it myself yet. Uh, however, from what I've seen of the gameplay, I mean, it just seems like it translates great, perfectly. I've even done videos already saying that RuneScape would before they even announced this. So it just makes a lot of sense. And all of that sense is kind of why this, this list is here. It's supposed to be analytically looking at these games and without bias, trying to see which ones are gonna be worth investing to. So basically, by me putting RuneScape on this list for mobile MMO category, I'm essentially saying that no mobile MMO upcoming, even other re-releases, are worth investing into. I'm also saying that while some of them might look good, like the BDO port, it's actually not a port, it's actually a different game. It's more of an action RPG. It's debatably, is it even an MMO? And that's what I'm trying to say. So, yeah. Now, next up, I'm gonna have a shooting MMO, actually. Now, this one is maybe more contested on the list. It is Defiance, a another remake of a game. Defiance 2050, or 2050, sorry. Well, this is going to be a remake of Defiance, which, when it released, it actually did have some competition. And even now, debatably, there's some competition. I probably could do a top 10 list of just these kind of MMO, actually. But just because I could put 10 games on a list, doesn't mean I should. All the other games have mixed or mostly negative reviews. They're not good. They've had a lot of drama, a lot of BS, but Defiance has had the most money poured into it. It even has a show, which I haven't watched, but the Defiance mechanics seem good enough. It's a co-op focused uh, open world uh, shooter game with aliens. It actually reminds me a lot of Firefall, which whenever I mentioned Defiance uh, previously on a top 10 for sci-fi MMO, I said I really liked Firefall as well. And I think those two games went hand in hand. But Defiance is the one that kind of survived. But at the same time, even though it did technically survive, it did enough to exist. The company behind it is actually revamping it. They don't want it to just exist. They want it to be really a massive game. They put so much into it and they're not giving it up. And when games do that, instead of just shutting down and leaving, when they just revamp and re-push, that's when I know, okay, there's passion there. There's something there. This isn't just a last Hail Mary. I don't believe so. This is something special, and that's why you need to look toward it. So, of course, there's some emotional bias there, but at the same time, you have to see the history of the development of this game, and really all the money that's being pushed into it and how much attention is being thrown on it. Plus, it's also going to be on consoles, uh, which is a big, 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 big thing that a lot of people don't uh, keep in mind. So, Defiance 2050 for a shooting MMO, even though there are some others, such as Foxhole, I think is cute, and again, there's a lot of early access ones. No, 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 no. Defiance 2050 is the one that will be on top. How big that'll be, I don't know, but there's not many shooter MMOs that you can say are even worth looking at, but Defiance is definitely gonna be one worth playing. Okay, so we went through three games, and those were essentially remakes, ports, uh, expansions. But now we, we have two games that are actually new MMO that should be coming out or playable like in a beta state here this year, and they're actually both theme park MMOs, which I really don't like putting two in the same genre. And there's some other games I wanted to throw in here and I could talk about like the classical MMORPG genre that's coming out. But I'm going to be honest, if I'm not mentioning a genre of MMO, I think all of them will, to some degree, kind of a little bit fail. Yeah, I could say sandbox MMO. I could talk about classical MMO. I could talk about RPG focused MMO. All, all. No, I really don't think that they're going to work. I don't. I'm sorry, I played a lot of you, it's just not working out. Not right now, and maybe in a year, with a big update and expansion, we could talk about you, but I cannot, with a straight face, say that it's gonna work out. However, these two games, I do think I can, with the money and the pressure and the attention and hype that these games are getting, 
Yes, I, I think that's gonna work out. So we first are gonna talk about Bless Online. This is a title that I am extremely excited for. This is the game that I'm personally gonna be focusing on. I even actually applied for an emissary position, uh, which is a content creator position. So Bless Online is a PvEVP game, and in a lot of ways, it's very much inspired from Final Fantasy XIV, but also World of Warcraft. And it seems like they're mixing those ideas basically perfectly together with a little bit more focus on Warcraft being the PvP, actually. Uh, with the aesthetic and a lot of the mechanical design being from Final Fantasy XIV. Now the gameplay, uh, what you're seeing in the trailers and stuff, is not exactly what it's going to be like in the Steam version, so I'm sorry if you're watching this video a little bit late, but the Steam version is going to have a revamped a combat system, things are going to be a little bit changed, um, and we don't know what that's exactly going to be like, but I want to talk about that. See, a lot of people might say that Bless is going to fail, because it's technically failed in other regions, but actually, this is why I think it's going to succeed is Bless Online did try once. They tried an idea, a concept. It leaned a little bit more toward a Final Fantasy IV-ish, very slow-paced and sluggish type of gameplay, and that didn't quite jive with a lot of people. Plus, it was kind of Western-styled. It, it just didn't fit the niche. It, well, I guess it was kind of do uh, a couple of different things, really, and it didn't fit anywhere, and so it failed. But, but, now it's actually rebuilding itself, and we've seen a lot of rebuilds have actually done freaking fantastic. And this game is maybe going to do kind of like a Realm Reborn-ish style uh, rebranding here. And it's really focused more on a Western audience. It's even going by to play specifically for a Western audience. And my audience is Western. And so even it might not be the most popular game in the world, I think it's going to do pretty good. Imagine that in the West. <laughs> and then maybe it'll bleed over into the rest of the world. Who knows? Um, but it seemingly is a very vanilla type of MMO, right? It's very simple classes, very simple, usual fantasy aesthetic. But I think in all of that, there's actually going to be a lot of depth uh, deep down in the game uh, based on interviews and based on what they've really been fine tuning and retooling and listening to the community, specifically what they want, what they don't want, and putting that into the game. And so if you're hungry for an MMO, I think most likely as an MMO player, you know, the Venn diagram is going to be circled right around what Bless Online will be. It might not be the best of any one specific niche, but it's gonna hit a whole lot of sweet spots for a whole lot of people, and at the same time, kind of uh, more geared toward a PvP player base. Even though it does have dungeons and stuff like that, it's still an open world, faction-based PvP game. So PvEVP, um, pretty much probably at its purest here inside of Bless Online, and that leaves me super excited. And finally, we have Air, uh, Ascent Infinite Realms. This might take a little bit longer to officially release. I'm hoping we do have a playable alpha beta in 2018. I imagine so. I think that there's gonna be a lot of reused assets. I think that this game is going to be a very safe bet, even though it seems very different with it being a steampunk, it's still steampunk fantasy, and a lot of stuff I've specifically seen in other MMOs, and this is actually gonna be coming from uh, the people from like Black Desert, as well as PUBG, uh, coming together, working to make air. This is seemingly as well. I think there's going to be PvEVP, but I don't think it's it's quite as open and balanced as Bless Online. Uh, I think in a lot of ways for a theme park, it's more very specifically, hey, here's the PvP roller coaster. Okay, let's go into the dungeon, you know, you know uh, I guess some other ride, you know, goat carts or whatever. <laughs> uh, you, you know, you have the, the very specific theme park rides here in air. So Bless is a little bit more open and more amoebus. I think things are going to blend a little bit easier together. Where air is, yeah, you do this, you do that, you do that. This is a game for everyone, but it's also fragmented and split apart and that's okay too so there's two different ways you can approach three theme park i guess mmos and air and bless are kind of doing it in different ways while also being very similar in ways but basically yeah the gimmick here is air is a steampunk mmo with freaking airship and vehicular combat this is super cool a lot of people were actually hungry for games like this uh but not mmos we were looking at like fractured space and so many others came out like cloud pirates from the outlaws team uh there was dreadnought there's a lot of like uh, air steampunky or spaceship combat but put into an mmo space i think makes so much more sense and I've played a lot of those games and they really hit miss the mark, I think. But with an MMO, a massive number of players, you have your crew all working together, playing together in a guild setting, I think is, mm, that is the sweet spot. That is the sex. But uh, Ascent Infinite Realms, I don't know how much is really going to be focused on that vehicular combat, on the steampunk versus the class fantasy dynamic of running dungeons on foot. We don't know the balance yet. Uh, we don't know a lot about a lot of these games. I mean, it's an upcoming list, right? But when it comes to air, 
uh, especially the history of who's making this game, it, I just feel like it's just a really safe bet. Steampunk fantasy MMO, theme park it up, you know, just kind of use the usual mechanics, usual systems. You have already made other MMOs and other big games. You got this coming. It's it's going to be okay. It could even be uproariously pay to win, and it'll probably still actually be okay. You know, tragic as tragic as that is, it's just. There's so much money coming into all of these games that I've mentioned. There is so much attention on these games, and I feel like the ideas are just just good enough, just safe enough, and uh, the history, of course, of the development teams is they kind of know a little bit of what they're doing. It should be fine. Of course, generally, though, I, I do like games that are a little bit more wild, a little bit more original and crazy, but I think when you actually get into the game and you get into the core game loops, you might find that, yeah, actually having a game that runs is a little bit important. You know, if you actually want to loop in an MMO, you want to actually grind for gear and actually consistently play for a while, that is part of the loop. You need you need a good solid loop to even run an MMO. Um, so yeah, as, as crazy as I like a lot of these weird original games that I could talk about, and you'll see those in other top 10 lists, it's just these are the five that I'm picking that I think honestly are the ones that will not be dead on arrival. For every other, I'm serious about this too, every other game that will release in 2018 I think has a very high chance of, for most people, being considered dead on arrival. And I'm also including the ones that have already released. I know that's harsh. Maybe I'll get dislikes and stuff, especially because this video was just ranted out, but that's what I wanted to do. I just wanted to talk to you guys. I'm a real freaking person who really likes MMOs, and I'm just here talking to you as a person who really likes MMOs. Me and you guys, we're buddies, we're friends, right? Friends and family. We just want to play games together, and I'm just saying, I think these are the games that we should play together, because they'll be the ones that we can play together. Yeah, you know? It's just, I like playing games that actually survive and exist and are real. So these are the ones. Hope you guys understand that. Take it to heart. And if you've uh, been around the MMO block, I think you know what I'm talking about. So, much love, guys. Kind of a sadder video in some ways, but at the same time, I think you should keep that hype alive. Get excited for these games. I think they'll probably surprise us in a lot of ways that we weren't ready for. Well, I mean, that's the surprise, right? If we're not ready for it. It's... Okay, anyways, much love. My name's Skylint. See you in the next one.